name is Tamara, and I'm delighted to welcome you on the CineLink talk, which is organized in partnership with Screen International and the training program Medici, the film funding journey, which I personally represent. The, well, here we are in online business segment of Sarajevo Film Festival, CineLink, that is known to be the place for the meaningful discussions and also to be the place to plug and awareness raising and exchange about the issues that are very important for the audiovisual sector, not only in Southeastern Europe, but internationally. No surprise that the rest of one hour will focus on the topic, which is about the sustainability agenda in this field. We're gonna ask the question if a, co -product, if a production and a co-production can be green. What are the national and regional funds doing in order to achieve this agenda? Most importantly, we will try to look into the challenges that this work brings to us and how we can overcome the challenges collectively so that we can really achieve a tangible result of sustainability that is much needed. Well, my role here is only to ask the questions and to be more informed professionally. Luckily, I'm joined by wonderful professionals who will share their expertise and their knowledge about the subject matter. And I invite you all the attendees to ask the questions on the chat bar that you are all already very well familiar with, and I'll try my best to voice some of them. So together with me here today are wonderful professionals, the speakers whom I'm gonna introduce one by one right now. So Seha Cekic, who is the Managing Director of the Montenegro Film Fund is here here with us. Amra Baxichamo, whom you all know as the head of CineLink, but who is also a seasoned producer operating out of Bosnia with a great experience of setting co-productions in this region, but also internationally. Susanna Belikova is the manager of Slovak Film Commission, and she's going to tell us a lot about the actions they are taking. And from Italy, Alberto Batocci, who's representing the Trentino Film Fund and Commission. Finally, it's Christiane Dopp, a film commission Hamburg, who's been very enthusiastic about green agendas for over, for, for, for many years now, let's say. So we have less than an hour. We have a very important topic. So dear guests, I would invite you to try to embark our audience on uh, the strategy bit first to understand what you're doing, how and when did you achieve those programs that echo and relate to sustainability agenda. And then we're going to go into the topic of the challenges and what has to be done with regards to setting the co-production strategy around it. Mm -hmm. So if I may, Christiana, I'm gonna, I'm looking at you on the screen right now. And I know that it's over 10 years that you are working on the topic of the co-product on of the green issues. Hamburg Film Commission has made a real leap forward. So I would like to ask you to tell us precisely how it started, when, and what are the formal um, actions in place? Yeah, thank you so much. And thank you, first of all, for having me, because I'm really appreciative about uh, this invitation. Yes, as you managed, we uh, mentioned, you know, we started in 2011, 2012, with this uh, initiative, Green Shooting Card. And uh, we awarded now mm, more or less 300 times this award to the productions here in Northern Germany. And uh, we um, went on last year in April 2020 with the Green Filming Badge. This is a higher level now, it's mandatory now, because if you want to get money here from Hamburg, from the Film Fund, you have to um, uh, do the green filming, the green issues, and uh, these are several measures you have to avoid. But uh, first of all, I want to mention that uh, as with many other topics of the environmental issues, um, needs they needs a European strategy in order to be a really effective while offering a safe economic framework um, for the European countries and their industries. The actual situation will lead to a distortion in competition if some countries have more demanding or restrictive environmental standards compared to others. But um, I think the solution must be together. We can't solve the climate change by our own, by our own. We have to share our experiences and we have to communicate. 
And uh, this is, I think, the, the most, um, most important thing. We have to communicate because um, time to act is now and together. Uh, thank you very much. And am I right? And that's probably can what you've just said can be a motto and the log line for, for, for the rest of this discussion, but also the actions that we all need to collectively take. Am I right to understand that in your role, you're doing the sustainability check across the film value chain in whole, which literally means from screenplay to distribution? Is that so? Are you accompanying the process somehow? Absolutely. We provide a lot of uh, consulting, of workshops, training. And I think this is uh, especially in the first, uh, in, if, if you do the first steps, this is really necessary. You need, you need the, the support of um, green consultants, of a film fund, of uh, film commissions. I think this is the first step you have to go. Yeah. So you're helping the industry as well to understand how to break it down. What does it also mean for them, Absolutely. for producers yeah. and so on? Well, yeah. I think that's very interesting. And we've been having some questions around it, not only in the region of the uh, Sarajevo Film Festival, but also in other parts of the world. So that's, let's keep that for, uh, for a moment and let me travel to Italy right now. Alberto, I would like to hear from you. Um, and I give you two angles and you, you, you take it as, as you prefer. Could you please tell us a bit about the work of Cineregio, the, the network of the regional film funds to which you are part of, because their, their, men, their actions on green is also quite very solid, I would say. And then tell us about Trentino Film Fund and, and your work towards the sustainability agenda. Sure. Uh, so I'll start from uh, Cineregio, which is uh, the network of the European network of the um, regional film funds, uh, and uh, and, uh, and it's uh, I think it's a, a real a really important network to have because and I'm 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 speaking about Cineregio, but um, uh, I'm introducing that. But Cristiane and 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 Susanna are uh, and their funds are also members of Cineregio. And uh, um, Cineregio um, is the network of about 50 uh, um, film funds across Europe, Switzerland, Norway, uh, and um, uh, yeah. Um, 12 European countries plus Switzerland and, and uh, Norway and the UK. And uh, what uh, Cineregio does is uh, uh, work together uh, for uh, sharing knowledge about the film industry and setting policies in order to uh, promote the interests of regional, uh, the, the regional audiovisual industries. And uh, these interests are promoted as, uh, often towards the European institutions. So it is uh, uh, really important because we as regional film funds, uh, as regional film commission, um, um, work a lot to make, for example, uh, um, co-productions possible to work uh, working together with other colleagues as we know uh, we also Christiane and Susanna know that uh, we uh, the work we do uh, locally but also together as partners is uh, really really important for for European cinema uh, within Cine Regio there are many subgroups uh, for example the Kids Regio uh, which is uh, um, uh, whose obje objective is fostering uh, um, uh, kids and youth cinema across Europe, or uh, um, also DocuRegio for documentaries. And uh, one subgroup uh, we as uh, Trentino Film Fund and Commissions are members of, but also uh, Hamburg and, and, and uh, Slovakia, it's uh, uh, Green Regio. Uh, and uh, as the name says, it's uh, the, this subgroup is about sustainability. And I think uh, that Green Regio is uh, one of the most active subgroup, subgroups of Cineregio. And uh, because all the members are really, really motivated and, uh, and uh, very competent. I think that during, during the last years working together, uh, we have been able to share 
knowledge, experiences. I've I've been learning so much from other partners uh, who before us started this journey um, uh, about uh, sustainability in order to make to reduce the impact of film productions in in uh, um, uh, yeah on the impact of film productions on the environment and. Um, the um, so going to the, the institution I, I'm, I'm working uh, uh, with uh, for is uh, Trentino Film Funding Commission as uh, um, as you know is um, a regional film fund and uh, um, we are as a rather small region in the Northern Alps uh, Italian Alps and uh, locally we have a, a good tradition about uh, sustainability in other industrial sectors and uh, and uh, we decided uh, back in 2016 that uh, mm, we would we wanted to have something similar also for the local film industry because every year we are hosting several film productions as it happens for many film funds and commissions, many regions, all the regions in Europe and uh, in the world. And uh, um, what we wanted is, is to trying to um, in, um, foster producers to reduce their impact. As we know, film productions uh, can be very impacting on the environment sometimes. So um, we partnered up with the local uh, um, environmental protection agency because we are not, we were at least at that time, we were not sustainability experts. We, we wanted to find someone on our territory, territory who was actually an, a sustainability expert. So we called our colleagues at the Environmental Protection Agency and, uh, and we proposed them to, to build an instrument, a tool for uh, uh, providing producers very practical rules uh, um, uh, very practical actions they should uh, um, put into practice during the shooting in order to reduce their their impact. We uh, we were very aware uh, very uh, aware back then that we were not alone in the in the European panorama. Hamburg was already active. Was the uh, it was very inspiring what the, what they did what what they are doing and uh, and also without Cine Regio and Green Regio we started talking about what 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 we could do and but uh, what the, the most important thing is that our approach from the beginning was really practical uh, what we wanted to do is provide producers. Uh, who are really busy during uh, pre-production and especially during the shooting, clear indication on on what they could do to um, to reduce their impact on their environment. But also, uh, we wanted to uh, connect to uh, this engagement um uh and incentives because we thought that at least at the beginning it was important to incentivize this behavior and in order to do that we introduced also a certification uh which is now active uh all across europe and uh because we thought that um since uh, our incentives we are a public f uh, institution we are a public fund and uh, our money of course comes from the public administration and so it was important that uh, if we uh, give money connected to uh, a, a responsible behavior toward the environment this uh, uh, responsible behavior has to be certified and uh, and so we opted for a certification uh, which involves uh, a, a third party verification body that can tell if the producer has been good or bad uh, in respecting the action that actually the producer in, himself or themselves decide to respect before the shooting.
And this rating system is called uh, Greenfield, Greenfield, am I right? And it's Correct. in place already, right? Of course, you, uh, you, uh, you can check our website, which is basically green.film. I write it also in the chat here, green.film. And so on the website, you can, you can have a look at uh, the rating system. Basically, it's a, a, a collection of actions and um, um, divided into criteria that are very, very basic and similar and common to all uh, the protocols and all the actions that are also other institutions put into practice about sustainability. Uh, you wouldn't, you will not find nothing new if you're already a bit familiar about what sustainability means. Uh, and uh, and this practical approach is what we wanted to do in order to uh, um, really um, motivate producers to to do a step forward in terms of. So uh, as I hear from both of you, mm -hmm, Christiana mm -hmm, and yourself, mm -hmm. Alberto, you've been also very cautious in embarking the producers on this journey and somehow creating the, the knowledge hub, let's say, or connecting them to, to the green experts or environmental agents. You know, the, the, the terms differ, but the idea is the same to have someone who brings the knowledge to to accompany the process somehow. So we'll we'll come back to that because I'm quite interested to see how this could echo in 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 some other territories or in the in the production landscapes where the production capacity is a bit lower. But before before we do that, I would like to go to Susanna uh, and um, as, as just to, to make it clear for everyone, the Slovak Film Commission is an integral body of the local national fund. So actually she is representing a national funding body. And um, I was very impressed when I went on your website of the Film Commission in this case, and I saw this whole portal green platform. So I'm, I'm, I'm curious to hear more because I think that you're somewhere in, in the middle, if I may say, before we enter the real southeastern uh, region here. So are you in, in, in preparation? Are you collecting all the tools and knowledge in order to start boosting this awareness in, in, in your territory, but maybe also in, in naturally co-producing countries, Susanna? So tell, tell us more about the initiatives. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, yes, uh, so our uh, film commission was launched uh, three years ago, three and a half years ago, and uh, since the beginning uh, we were offered uh, uh, to become a member in the Green Screen Partnership, uh, which is uh, an Interreg Europe funded project uh, where the lead partner is Film London. And uh, I thought that it's going to be great launch if we already start to think uh, also about the sustainability. But to tell you the truth, I didn't know much about it. So first few years, I would say, was just you know like trying to grasp all the information that we received. Uh, I have my colleague here uh, sitting next to me, which you cannot see, Eva, who was a big help uh, to me as well within this project. And uh, so together we were just trying to absorb all the information, but also to share this information with our uh, local film industry. Uh, we really received a very positive feedback from part of the film industry because they were craving for this type of information. They didn't know where to find the sources. They didn't know what is happening around Europe. They knew they would like to move forward uh, with the and being more sustainable on sets, but they didn't really uh, found, uh, find any information about it. So um, they welcomed this initiative uh, quite a lot. And we already created kind of uh, uh, our green group uh, inside of Slovakia. But uh, it's also you know, like difficult to convince uh, other producers that uh, might be kind of uh, hesitating whether it's uh, going to do anything uh, for the you know for the future if the footprint of slovak film industry is any of importance because you know like the average uh, uh, budget of a local film here is 1.2 million euros so i mean uh, they are still kind of hesitating so 
we first organized several workshops uh, and then we also invited them to to be part of the of the workshop uh, among uh, uh, the, the experts you know um, from the green screen project so i think that uh, we are now moving forward and uh, we are more and more developing uh, our platform as uh, you mentioned that we have this uh, green platform that we created and within this platform, first we uh, made this green call, which is a call for our local film industry to participate, to be aware of, to, to that they can become uh, kind of uh, members of our green group and uh, try to do something different, try to follow some basic rules. Uh, and then we created also green guidelines uh, together with the Institute of Circular Economy in Slovakia that helped us a lot uh, creating and adapting some of the rules that uh, exist. Uh, but as uh, Christian mentioned in the beginning, uh, we also understand that this cooperation within Europe is necessary. And we can see these, and I really uh, appreciate the push from the Creative Europe uh, nowadays when uh, they uh, uh, made these new calls and uh, they are really taking care not only about sustainability, but also the inclusivity. So I think that this can be also a big push. Uh, within this partnership that I mentioned, Green Screen, uh, we also created one smaller subgroup, subgroup with um, our partner from uh, Belgium, uh, the Flemish Audiovisual Fund and uh, uh, an agency from Malaga from Spain. Uh, uh, because we um, needed and or felt that it is necessary for us uh, to have some kind of measurement tool. So this measurement tool uh, would be the carbon footprint calculator that uh, we called Eureka. And um, this is tool that uh, we are trying to develop and that would be working pan, as a pan-European tool. So it would be able to measure also the footprint for the co-productions because uh, as uh, the Flemish uh, National Fund, uh, the Flemish um, Film Fund or the Spanish uh, Carbon Calculator, they were developed and they could uh, not um, count very well the co-production footprint. So now we are trying to uh, work with the scientists and the software developers in order to create a tool that could be used uh, around Europe. So this is basically it, because uh, we feel that also the measurement of the footprint can be the engine behind uh, this uh, kind of like uh, future funding system uh, support from our national fund and also maybe some other funds, uh, because we don't have any data available for Slovak Republic. We don't know what is the average footprint of a documentary, fiction, film, TV series. So first, I think that we need to measure this in order to set up some kind of uh, uh, funding support. Uh, we do cooperate and we would like to cooperate more uh, with uh, other uh, initiatives. So we have Alberto and Luca already in our uh, advisory board. Uh, we have other experts from around the Europe uh, that are trying to help us to create this tool that would be not only effective but also user friendly because we also try to understand the needs of the uh, production, you know, like producers or production managers or uh, uh, eco-consultants that they don't have time uh, to fill in another chart. Uh, so we are also trying to uh, implement some budgets that, uh, you know, could be the reference measurement uh, and then some advanced calculation based on the actual inputs uh, from the film production. Uh, so this is basically it. And, uh, we do hope that uh, we can join forces and um, become one in this, because I think that what uh, we can hear from everywhere, you know, because uh, every country now is trying to uh, establish these green measures based on also this push from Creative Europe, that they have this scattered information from everywhere. And it's, uh, you know, like every country has its own rules, its gu uh, own guidelines. So we feel that uh, it's necessary to create uh, one European uh, focus, or I would say um, initiative that uh, would be working for everyone. Thank you very much. If I think out loud, I have a feeling that this harmonization process or like data collection and also understanding how 
the policies need to be then translated into the action is something that you're all in your own way uh, advocating for, uh, because that will probably give um, the, the push to, to a better sustainability, but it will also help the industry. And I mean, particularly producers who need to understand how to, how to embed those strategies when they are setting up a film, and especially the ones that are of a structure of a co-production. And we'll have someone later here on screen who will show her different perspective on the subject matter that is not of fans. But before I go to Amra, uh, I would like to hear from Sehat, um, because thanks to him, I got to know that in 1991, there was a Montenegro was self-declared as an ecological state in a way, and it was way uh, before all these actions being taken that there was some policy and political will in Montenegro to, 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 to make an awareness at least of the sustainability agenda. So before I hear your perspective, Sahad, on, on this topic and if there are any actions or if you are collecting maybe for the moment the knowledge to understand where to start, let me like give me one more minute to tell you. When in my previous professional function, when I was in the Georgia National Film Fund, you know, setting up the funds for minority co-productions, for you know, creating opportunities for Georgian producers to, to be viable partners in international business deals and co-production strategies was really quite a lot of work because of the low production capacity, because of many other issues of the cost accounting and so on, that would make my producers, let's say, slightly uncompetitive sometimes. And now if I look at it from this perspective, I think there's also a layer here when we need to support industry, support producers in lower production capacity countries to understand how to maneuver with this new vital element coming on the funding condition agenda. So could I have your perspective as uh, from Montenegro, but also to look at it broadly and see where do you see the need for cooperation or awareness or anything else that comes to your mind immediately. Thank you, Tamara. Hello, everyone from Sarajevo. Uh, yes, Montenegro is celebrating the 30th anniversary of this declaration. And when you see the horrifying pictures from all over the world, you know, you, 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 can, you can feel the prophetic words that were in, in, into this put into this declaration. But you know, in reality, <laughs> uh, there was some other, uh, let's say, interests. So investors, tourism, and everything that you know, we are not the first ecological country, let's say, in practical way. But the, the ecology and, let's say, the, the, the nature are very high in a, in a public opinion. So on a general level, we have this feeling that we, let's say, need to be very cautious when it comes to nature. And, uh, seizing the, the resources. On the other hand, Montenegro is a touristic country, so consumption is, let's say, something that we rely uh, heavily on. So it is, it is in a way, let's say, uh, complicated when it comes to ecology in Montenegro. So on, on the other hand, when it comes to, to films and the film industry, it's a very small industry, so our carbon footprint uh, uh, is not that high. But you know, we, we are now in the, let's say, phase that we are following what is, is being is, is done in, in Europe or, or the initiatives that are there. So we are trying to find what is, let's say, something that we can adopt and we, we can, uh, let's say, uh, put in practice. Uh, on the other hand, it's very complicated period of time. So we went through or partly went through the pandemic. So we changed a lot industry in, within this, uh, let's say 16, 17 uh, months that, that we are uh, going through this, uh, this pandemic. So uh, we have a need to rebuild the, the industry in a way with the new, let's say, healthy measures that have to be part of the everyday practice. And in the same time, we have unstable budgets, I think, all over the region. Uh, and we need to introduce some new uh, practice. So, it is challenge in a way, but you know, I'm, we are coming from Montenegro, which is uh, heavily relies on co-productions. I, I think that we don't have something that's called 100% national film. 
so we co-produce all the time so the so the let's say uh, transfer of the people from all over the region to montenegro from montenegro to other uh, uh, regions is something that is a part of our everyday practice when it comes to film industry that's why i think that on a regional level we need to to re regional or uh, european level we need to work on let's say what you called harmonization of the practices and uh, green filming is need to be let's say high on this uh, uh, agenda uh, as a matter of fact the regional centers are cooperating rather let's say on a uh, everyday uh, basis and we start to harmonize some of our practices let's say some of our administration we need to let's say facilitate the, the traveling of the uh, uh, projects between uh, our countries so there will be something that uh, let's say applications will be very uh, similar within every of these countries uh, i think only not only applications but also reporting and uh, i think in the next period of time the green uh, filming will be part of these uh, talks and these uh, harmonizations uh, efforts thank you very much sahad if i if i've understood correctly you've mentioned something that will probably be very important and also uh, even within the context, if we walk away from European context for a while and stay within the regional understanding where you and I at least now are here in Sarajevo, um, I think you're, you're mentioning that this could be also the topic that uh, the, the regional perspective and the understanding of the policymakers together need to work further and like explore what could be the what could be the actions, the steps that you could somehow collectively take in order to um, introduce the sustainability agenda in real practice, right? That yeah. you've been hinting on. That's that's very interesting. And we know that the in Cinelink, for in many years, different topics been discussed uh, in different formats, uh, uh, be it a think tank or a panel. And it's I think it's a very good start that the conversations are sparking around this topic here. Um, I, I do feel there will be a future in these discussions in, in additions to come. And that brings me to Amra. Um, before we go into the festival aspect, Amra, you are the producer who's done all sort of films, and uh, you've set up numerous co-productions, be it in the region or internationally. And you've seen um, uh, evolving of the key trends or elements, I would rather say, in the funding world, be it um, the, the, the required spends, be it the issues of the gender equality, you know, all, all the elements that you need to constantly take into account when you are setting up a structure and looking how to, to counter and balance. So I wonder what's your opinion about um, sustainability elements that are coming in and where do you see the challenges? You know, uh, for me, thinking about there is, yes, I have a big uh, kind of past experience in different co-productions and service uh, service productions, but I'm also coming from a very third world, in a, in a, especially when we're talking green. You know, I'm in a country that, you know, first of all, our fund is not here at this table. It's me as an independent producer. So uh, they are not yet there. And I doubt that uh, we don't have a really a national fund, but something that we consider two national funds in two parts of Bosnia. Uh, and uh, they have been not very well in catching breath in the last 10 years with what is going on in the film industry, on one hand. On the other hand, most of it, it has been a personal responsibility of the producers since the beginning. So I suppose for us, the green is going to first become a personal responsibility and then it is going to become an obligation. So it is a bit of vice versa. You know, we will be, and because of European rules and the fact that the most of Bosnian films as, as, as well as in Montenegrin films are made as co-productions, we will be through our obligations of our partners, be obliged to do the green production. So it is, so we will not get any subsidies for it, but we will be obliged to do it, which is a big danger for us because our, you know, having in mind how the funding is on which level is in Bosnia, 
you know, this can really put us in a position that, uh, you know, we are hardly surviving now. And, you know, I know that we are not talking 30%. We are not talking like huge differences, but, you know, in Bosnia, if we are talking 4%, it can sometimes be on the breaking point of a project because we are always fetching us as much as we can. So there is a big danger of, uh, for us, for countries like Bosnia and low capacity countries in different regions around Europe and in Europe and on the outskirts of Europe that, that are still living out of the co-production and that their industries are dependent on co-productions, that we will have a problem of, you know, it will be a problem. It will become a problem. First of all, you mentioned, you know, when we, we had a preparatory talk and our listeners were not with us, but we're talking about having this panel next year in Sarajevo for real. And then the train was mentioned coming to Sarajevo by train. And suddenly we have a problem, you know, because coming to Sarajevo by train, you know, it's, you know, it's a, it needs a lot of resilience, resilience from people who will embark on that trip. So it is very similar to, you know, what I need to have in order to have a green production. Personally speaking, it has been in our production company for many years, but on a level of a personal responsibility. Uh, uh, my colleague producer and myself, we are running the company together for 17 years and Alice and myself have been, you know, uh, uh, recycling and, you know, not using plastic and trying to, you know, using cups and even before it was, uh, you know, even because it was, it was even, you know, something that you would find in uh, sets in Europe. But that is, that is the personal responsibility. It is not the question of rules. So I'm not really sure how well and how fast we will be able to, uh, to cop on on the green train. And on the other hand, uh, you know, having the third world problems as well, which is, you know, for us talking green is uh, talking waste, you know, because we are swamped in our own waste. So the level of problems that we are also discussing and carrying, discussing green, is something that uh, will have a different impact on us. And I have to say that I understand this is not what the panel is about, but I think that you know, there, is a, there is this aspect of how to produce and how to line produce, having in mind the green production. But on the other hand, is also what kind of messages we are sending through our films, what kind of scripts we are writing, what kind of decisions we are taking when we are putting our stories uh, you know, to the screen. Can we change our audiences? Can we? You know, can we change those cinemas with plastic cups, you know, and popcorns? So there are so many, there are so many small things that, you know, are part of a bigger question. But uh, I would kind of, as a, as a small cry from the, you know, outskirts of Europe, be aware that it is going to be difficult for us. Well, I think this is exactly what the panel is about, because we never intended to only talk what are the actions already in place. The most important part of this conversation is where you're now trying to lead us, and all of the speakers are more than uh, aware and uh, absolutely attentive to the subject matter, and this is why we are together here now. And I would actually very much like to echo what Amra just said, because I'm sure that, for instance, you, Christiana, you would have um, some experiences as your programs are up and running to, to deal with co-productions probably, or as you know, with some of your peers in other territories where, um, where the agenda is not yet embedded in the policy framework and they are not acting on it. So, so what happens then? How are you reacting to this? Are you bringing in some knowledge or uh, are you... What, what happens? What's, what, 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 how, you, how do you deal with that? Yeah, thank you. I just wanted to um, agree to Amra as well because I think at least we are talking about money and credibility yeah. because this is the most important thing. You know, if you start uh, thinking green and to Susanna as well, if you start and if you just see a big green jungle and you don't know how to start, what's the first steps and where's the first tree I can recognize and so on. Just get in touch with um, every other film commission or film fund or institutions in Europe and uh, learn from each other. I think this is really necessary to, to get in touch and to, um, to uh, share the experiences. And for instance, I mean, in Hamburg, you don't get really money for the production. You, you, get the, you have the application for, for your film production and you get money and just accept the green costs 
we don't give exactly money for green filming, you know, but of course it's included, you, know, you see, you have the green costs and we accept the, the cost. Uh, that's the main thing. And uh, maybe, you know, we will put this green policy um, now all over Germany in the film funds, erection film funds. And next year in Berlin, we will have a change in the regulations of the film law. So at least you need, you need the policy. If you don't have this, uh, there won't be any change, you know, but uh, now the film productions and film producers know, okay, next year it's a deadline and we have to, you know. And um, yeah, for instance, we have a co-production um, currently with Croatia, Croatia and, and Hamburg. And uh, I just uh, get in, in touch with the um, film commission in Croatia and I talked to this lovely lady and I said, okay, what, how's your situation, your green situation in Croatia? What can you provide? And she said, nothing. I mean, what, what can we do? I mean, we are talking, as you mentioned, we are talking about um, energy, uh, the generators, the lighting, the cars, the trucks, uh, the plastic, the consumption, the catering, and so on. And it's so hard to, uh, or other, uh, other thing, I can't um, um, say, okay, you have to, um, you have to change now all your, your policy and you have to um, provide all this in green. No, it's not possible. So I, um, I uh, told the film production, the film um, production here in Germany to take all the stuff, all what's possible in the, the natural resources, take it to Croatia and try to, yeah, show it and to um, implement it in, in the um, everyday uh, shooting there. So try to get this little green first step. And um, all the other thing, for instance, the big, um, the big points are always energy and uh, mobility and transport. These are the big uh, uh, points. So you can't solve this problem, you know, just think about and I think you, you will take this awareness to Croatia. And maybe one or two people um, take this um, motivation and, and say, yeah, let's let's do something. And uh, of course, we offered our um, experiences here from Hamburg, and I hope uh, we can help. And uh, that's the only thing you can do in this moment. Yeah, and we have to be very much aware of the situations in all territories, Excellent. as Amra um, yeah. uh, pointed out, and I also stay of indicated in the beginning, but I'm, yeah. I'm sure that there are concerns in um, in all territories that are acting on green agendas Absolutely. anyway. So you've uh, you've showed us one example, and I would like to ask Alberto, for instance, what concerns is he experiencing when he is consulting maybe the teams, or what are the issues that you think come as challenges? Because I don't believe that the policies come without challenges. They, they're normally, you always have to, to solve something. So how are you dealing with that? Uh, well, of course, um, producers, um, uh, besides being very enthusiastic, at least when they come to us uh, uh, about sustainability, they also have concerns. That's that's normal. And, you know, uh, try to imagine what the first concern of producers is costs and uh, so um, um, one one the first question that a producer uh, asks is uh, how much will it cost to make uh, a film sustainable uh, my uh, uh, um, impression my idea was also the information that we have is that uh, uh, making a film sustainable uh, somehow in, in, in some respects uh, can be a little bit more expensive, but uh, if you plan it correctly, you can also save money. And I give you an example, uh, which is maybe easy, uh, it's, but, but really makes the, can make the difference. At least in Italy, traditional films when, when it comes to uh, um, water supply on set, it means pallets and pallets or 50 cc uh, plastic bottles that then remain half empty. And this is a big cost. And uh, in our uh, protocol, one of the rules is actually in eliminating plastic, which, you know, 
is something that is very well known, is a measure that everyone in, uh, in, in, even in other uh, industrial sector does or tries uh, to do, eliminating plastic. We're substituting plastic bottles with flasks uh, here like this, or, uh, um, or directly getting the, the, um, the water from the tap. Yeah, uh, and this is a simple, uh, action that first of all helps you save the well reduces the waste because you don't have the plastic anymore saves water uh, uh, reduces transport costs and uh, and also it costs less rather than buying old plastic bottles uh, so this is one one example of how you can spare making a film sustainable um, a second problem that I see is that producers often um, find it difficult to um, to leave the whole the old good habits because produ producing a film uh, it's uh, a well consolidated process and uh, changing the way you do things um, um, brings you to a uncertainty. Uh, um, um, like uh, um, increases the level of uncertainty, and and this is not something uh, very in which the situation in which a producer feels comfortable. And uh, but what we re we respond uh, respond to that that um, we guide producers with very practical through very practical rules and above all what we do what we say and i think that susanna and christiane would agree is that uh, is not like a 0 to 100 process is like doing things step by step little by little if producers already do little things on set uh, little actions, practical, well, well done. Uh, of course, they will not save the planet with their one film, but they will start changing the mind of themselves and of the crews. And, uh, and at least they, they will have done something at the end. And on the next film, they will increase. And the, on the following one, it will be even more. And, uh, and so the commitment is something that grows film after film. And one other important thing is the, uh, in, is the power of uh, communication. Um, if myself, I am, I'm a film commissioner, you know, nobody knows me. I say that it's very important to save the planet uh, while, while, when we do films. Nobody listens what, to what I say. But if directors, producers, actors go on a stage, go in a press conference and say, look, we did our film in a sustainable way, the 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 mindset of 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 population of the general population not only film uh, film uh, people like uh, industry people change their minds it's it, th th this is something we we really stress when we when we would like when we involve producers in our in our uh, pro program Thank you very much. I mm. think what you've added is also mm. that this awareness also comes some in, in many cases, at least in this agenda, from the younger generation as well, who are very, yeah. uh, very active for, for, for the cause and they really make a, an effort to, to make a step forward, which, which is a healthy process in, in its own way. So um, more and more you talk, more I see how many actions need to be taken and meetings and exchange platforms in order to, um, as you said, set up the small steps that will bring us to the bigger change, which is not going to happen tomorrow, but that's fine if it happens on a long-term basis. So I'd like to come back to you, Susanna, and let's see, I mean, you are, you've collected the knowledge as we understood, and you have already the guidelines in place there. Some of it is not yet in action, right? So you are about to launch the program. So do you 
anticipate where where do you anticipate the most of the um, weaknesses or the challenges and um, how do you uh, think of solving them? So as it was uh, already mentioned uh, earlier, uh, unfortunately in our region, being uh, more sustainable means uh, also being more expensive because, uh, you know, like obviously still, it's kind of a, a new approach uh, in the Middle and Eastern Europe. So uh, it really is something that, uh, we think that in the beginning, we will need to motivate the producers by giving some um, incentives, uh, some financial incentives. So first of all, uh, from the beginning of 2022, we would like to uh, have some kind of like extra support for the producers in order to be able to hire the green consultant for their set. And uh, this green consultant will be responsible also for the final report. And uh, based on this final report, the producers would be also able uh, to ask for some additional support. Uh, we are not decided yet how much it would be and how much if it will be on specific uh, uh, costs uh, directly uh, with the sustainable filming or if it will be some percentage of the budget. We are also considering Alberto's certification. So we are looking into various options now and trying to see what's going uh, to be the best solution uh, for our um, country. Uh, so this is about it, but uh, I think that in the future, it will be similar to other funds. For example, I know the, the Flemish Film Fund, uh, for them it's obligatory to be sustainable in order to receive uh, the final installment uh, of the funding. So I think that we are heading towards uh, this kind of setup in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Well, in Flemish Film Fund, we, we all know, and some of the audience, I'm sure, also knows that they've made like a real leap forward in, in, in this direction and paved the way to many programs and actions. But for the moment, I, I think that Amra and Sahad would agree to that, that at this stage, obviously, there are a lot of territories which are absolutely in no position to put a condition on, on, on the funding at this stage, because that would create the disparity in, on the co-production structures were even bigger than it used to be some time ago. So I, I, I see how much work needs to be done, actually, to um, not only for the awareness, but um, also to place the right people you've called environmental consultants, the green experts. What does it mean when AMRA is uh, preparing a structure or the budget so will then her, the funds that she's co-producing from actually qualify it as a cost? Because sometimes we know that uh, the new costs need more time to be eligible in a way. Do you think, Sahad, that there's a lot to be changed in coming years with this, with all this, to make it more um, embedded in the in the funding landscape here in the region. I think it, it, we will follow everything that that is, you know, let's say, general attitude towards green filming and and the the green approach, and it will be part not only of for filming but also for our general living. So. Uh, what Alberto said, I think this uh, approach step by step and raising the awareness uh, uh, about the, 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 everything that we can do on a smaller or lar larger scale when it comes to green approach is something that we need to promote with our films. And filmmaking is rather very specific when it comes to, to producing because the public is also interested in, in, in the process of uh, let's say, producing the film, not only on the, uh, on the product, but also they're following the, 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 the filmmaking from its start. So we can promote the, the lifestyle and this green approach uh, through every of the activities that we are going through when it comes to, to, to film, not only the, the film production, but also distribution, cinemas, festivals, markets, and everything that is, let's say, part of this film production uh, radio chain. Absolutely. And I'm, I would like to, where we, we have like five more minutes to go, um, uh, and I would like to go to Amra 
and ask her if she sees uh, this topic being echoed more in future editions of Sinelink in different programs that you are doing and if there would be some actions taken to, to at least create bigger uh, awareness around the subject matter. I have to say that uh, I think it's immensely important, you know, we have been observing for year, for a few years what have been done to our, to our planet. So I don't think that I don't actually think it's a choice. I'm just saying, you know, I think it's an obli obligation that we have, you know, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's something that we need to do. Uh, and nevertheless, where we are coming from, it is not really a choice, you know, we are living on the same planet. So, you know, the, you know, the, the fact that I'm coming from the third world, I cannot be, you know, uh, uh, I cannot get some kind of a, you know, whatever, uh, Bianco check for a few years to ruin the planet while uh, others are saving it. So it is, you know, I think it's, you know, it's, it's the obligation that we all we are taking, that we all taking in. And it's the obligation that our festival is for sure is taking very seriously. But I also think that filmmakers and, you know, uh, and I think that it is also the question of what, it, what kind of atmosphere you are creating, because you are also educating while you are working, you are constantly bringing young people to set, you have trainees, you have assistants, you have people who are going to run this world in uh, this industry in 20, 25 years. And if they are teaching the right ways, then maybe that we can hope for a better future. I'll take it on from there, because I think what Amra said is important. It's not only the fans and the producers, but it's across the, the whole ecosystem and everyone has a responsibility to take. I really doubt there are many people out there who say that we should not act on the sustainability agenda and should not preserve what sometimes we think is granted. And the, the clever way of doing it would be to really join the forces and this time join the forces with less of a competition as many of our uh, speakers here mentioned and try to exchange to really learn and introduce the changes which are meaningful and informed. Christiana Dobb had to leave for, for another uh, event uh, and I would like to borrow something she uses as her own motto and also in the biography and she says, reduce, reuse, recycle, because there's no other way. We need to do it now and to act on it for the future. I think that's the great uh, motto to, to say thank you for all of you, all the speakers and the people who joined in and listened to this conversation. And I allow myself saying on behalf of the co-organizers that it's just the beginning of the conversations that you will hear around green policy here in frames of Sarajevo Film Festival. Thank you very much and see you next year, hopefully on site.